There's Larry. Okay, we got seven. So. We're good now. Okie doke. Here we go. Welcome to the February 7th meeting of the Transportation Committee of CB6. My name is Gene Santoro. I'm the chair of this committee. The meeting is called to order at 7.04 p.m. And uh, we're joined by Deputy District Manager Brendan Berth. Members of the public, you can raise any questions or comments that you have through the Q&A section of Zoom. If there is time following the committee's discussion, we will field questions from the public. Now, as far as I'm aware, we have no volunteers for minutes takers tonight. I would like to remind you all that the doodle poll is up. I would urge you to please fill it out. We do need people to continue to take notes, even though they're simplified from the minutes forms we used to use. We have to have somebody doing that. And currently we have nobody, as far as I'm aware, Brendan, uh, going forward. That is correct. So please, please, please fill it out. And right now we need immediately somebody to step up and just say, I'll do it tonight. Can we get a show of hands or even a hand? I just need the one. So who here hasn't done it in the last, like since September? It should be somebody who has not done it recently. I'll take anybody. Because we have to have somebody. And we've only got about half the committee, a little more than half the committee is here tonight. So it's going to be a limited option. Uh, for what it's worth, the meeting tonight should be relatively short. We're not going to go too deeply into either of the longer resos. Grand Central uh, or the uh, co-naming thing. We'll touch on them, but I'm going to push them back again, as I mentioned earlier, because Phil isn't here, and I want him to be very involved in both of those things. Uh, and he could. So, Gene, I I will do the minutes uh, with Brendan helps me again. That would be so fun. Be. I really appreciate it, especially since you two are chairing a committee, uh, and and process oriented as you are, I really appreciate you stepping up for this. Thank you. Okay, so we have the minutes taker. Now, that will be B. So moving along the script, we will now take attendance by roll call and guess what? Brendan will conduct the roll call. Many members, when I call your name, you will unmute yourselves. When your name is called, please say present. I will announce if there is quorum. B. Desmond. Present. Charles Fernandez. Present. Andrew Gross. Andrew is not here. Phil's not here either. Matt Roberts. Present. Gene Santoro. Here. Larry Shire. Present. Ann Seligman. Present. Brian Van Nuenhoven. Present. Ronnie White. Ronnie is not here. And James Wilson. James is not here either. Okay, but we still have a quorum, so yep. ahead we go. Okay. The agenda for tonight's meeting was distributed ahead of time by the board office and appears on the screen before you. If there's no objection, we will adopt the agenda as stated. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting the agenda, you may raise your hand through Zoom. I don't see any hands up. Brendan, do you see anyone? No, I do not. Okay, well then, seeing no objection, the agenda for tonight's meeting is adopted. Now, the minutes. 
The minutes from last month's meeting were distributed ahead of time by the board office. If there is no objection, we will adopt the minutes as drafted. Members of the committee, if you object to adopting the minutes, you may raise your hand through Zoom. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody. Brendan, do you? Nope. Okay, seeing no objections, the minutes from last month's meeting are adopted. They will soon be available on the CB6 website. Meantime, we will set the ground rules as always. In order to conduct an efficient meeting, let's observe these ground rules. No one may speak until granted the floor. Committee members, if you have a question about committee business, or wish to make a motion, please raise your hand through Zoom. There's a raise hand button, there's the chat, you can go to the participants icon rather, you can go to if you don't have that, to raise your hand. The chat function should not be used for committee business or questions about agenda topics. All such remarks should be made on the record by raising your hand through Zoom. Chat should only be used to alert us to any technical difficulties you're having, or to state in writing information like an email address that was already stated aloud on the record during the meeting. When a committee member is given the floor to speak, I will identify you and you can mute yourself so that you can speak. We are required by executive order to create a verbatim transcript of this meeting. So please keep your questions and comments succinct and germane to the discussion. Okay, so let's move on to agenda item number one, which is why the ever lovable, ever present Patrick Condon uh, is here tonight. Hello, Gene. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Patrick Condon here. Colleen, hi. Would you like me to begin right away, Gene? Or would you? Uh, yeah, I guess let's just let's just go into it. I mean, this is about you've got the you've got the information. It's about a single bus stop asking right. for asking for a stop. So let's uh, let's just do it. I'll, I'll give a brief history, I may, if I may, for those who may or may not recall some of our recent meetings regarding uh, developments in the industry and developments with Hampton and Jitney. So number one, uh, in the industry, as many people are aware, uh, you know, Greyhound had multiple uh, operations, as did Trailways with different companies, and Coach USA, as an example, uh, acquired different companies over the years. So Hampton and Jitney also, uh, I mentioned this in our last meeting, uh, created a company called HJ Opco, which is one of the companies, uh, Hampton and Jitney, it's a wholly owned subsidiary of Hampton and Jitney, and they also acquired a company called Hampton Luxury Liner, which you may recognize the name. Uh, they came before you many times and they sold their assets to uh, the, um, uh, the operating company, HJ Opco, which is part of Hampton Jitney Incorporated. So it's all one company uh, at this point in time. Hampton Luxury Liner had begun service, oh my goodness, maybe six, seven years ago, uh, and uh, went through a series of bus stop applications, one of which uh, is before us today. And the last of the group that was similar to the Hampton Jitney routes uh, of Hampton Jitney at 340 Lexington Avenue. So H.J. Opco and Hampton Jitney are the successor companies to the existing bus stop sign that still exists for Seven Bus, which was a name that Hampton Luxury Liner utilized corporately. I and utilized the, uh, the location at 340 Lexington Avenue for, at the time, seasonal service. H.J. Opco, Hampton Jitney, Hampton Luxury Liner, the same company, currently propose the following authorization from the DOT, and have applied accordingly, and ODT has given you the application tonight. That is currently for a seasonal operation based from e roughly Easter to uh, Thanksgiving, uh, based on an application app kind of driven program with uh, more of a, a younger market uh, demographic, uh, and with uh, six departures daily, seven days a week during that period of time at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Uh, this is very close to the 40th Street main operation of Hampton Jitney and what was formerly Sunrise, which is now part of Hampton Jitney as well on 41st. So um, uh, currently uh, there's some scaffolding up and down the block. On the other end, it looks like it's coming off, but it is a utilized uh, MTA bus stop and no issues. Uh, so the current stop that we're uh, looking at is in front of La Brochette Sushi. Uh, I'm not sure if Brendan has pictures. I apologize, I did not bring pictures. Uh, it is a, an established bus stop. 
a long standing bus stop. And the application we propose is for the successor stop of operations that have previously been there under the name Hampton Luxury Liner, which Hampton Jitney operates as HKO Op Opco along Lexington Avenue, which Community Board 6 also approved some other ones further north. But in the course of the portal system coming out now, we're here this evening on this particular application. So I could talk a lot about it, but I think you guys know quite a bit about it. So I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, I'll say that we uh, request your... Thank you, Brendan. There we go. Thank you, Brendan. Yeah. Yes, and thanks for the background, Patrick. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Does anyone have any comments, questions, observations? There's the stop at which got, still has the sign on it. See this little sign there? It still says seven bus. So we propose that it say, yeah, there it is up there. On the left under 101, 102, 103, right. a, it says seven bus, which was the earlier company named corporate, corporate name of Hampton Luxury Liner. As I indicated, bus companies, airlines, and ship lines often have multiple company operating names operated by the same company. That's the case here. Yeah, B, you have your hand up. Yes, I was going to recommend not hearing anything that we uh, make a resolution, propose a resolution supporting uh, the successor company um, as outlined here on a seasonal basis and the number of stops. Okay, we've got a couple other hands up. Let's go to them first. Uh, Anne? Yeah, um, that seems reasonable to me. My only question is about uh, the parking regulations. Is there parking ever allowed? Like it's a bus stop. So it's, and, and it, this is just like a, a quick pickup, um, a pickup drop off, right? So it's not like a bus is parking there, right? Actually, if you'd like me to answer that, uh, it's only for pickup only. It's not, not drop off at this location. Uh, drop so, off it's, so it's not going to interfere with, you know, if there's parking allowed on that there, block at other times there, of the day, it's, there, it's there, you're there not going to no, be interfering with MTA operations. If, if Brendan is here, um, uh, he can look to the far left of the corner of 39th and Lex. You'll notice a little red sign that says no standing right. anytime. Right. Uh, it's right on the corner in front of the Italian place, a uh, great little restaurant there. I'm sorry, yeah. it was there a moment ago. But there, there is no standing anytime. That's 24-7 right. because it's an active bus lane. And uh, Hampton Jetney, uh, Hampton Luxury Liner, HG Opco are part of the bus system, which utilizes all the bus lanes, which is part of the public transportation system, in this case, operating as a private carrier in public transport. Okay, thank you. Uh, Larry, you have your hand up. Yes, um, uh, I'd like to uh, know how you'll modify that uh, sign. Uh, it's a small flag. What will you put in there instead of seven bus? I have to defer to uh, Colleen. I think she's on the call and uh, that's up to the DOT uh, as, as the application comes in. It's a good question though. Now, how will you identify the bus? That's what I'm asking. So, I mean, it would be a standard um, HJCOO sign that would be probably under the MTA bus stop. Because uh, HJCOO is uh, absolutely meaningless. If it said Hampton Jitney, that certainly would uh, be uh, more desirable as a, a, a as a member of the public, somebody who is looking for a particular bus stop. I mean, I'm sure it will be identifiable that where it would, you know, people would know it's Hampton Jitney. I mean, I can get back to you on the exact signage that would be there, Larry. I'll confirm that with our bus stop management. Uh, Colleen, if I may jump in, thank you very much. And uh, it, it is a, it's a good question, Larry. Uh, I, I need to point out HJ Opco stands for Hampton Jitney Operating Company, OPCO uh, is what it is. And that name will come out over time, but the Hampton Jitney is clearly the name that people would know, yes. And this, or Hampton Luxury Liner, but good question, thank you. Are there any other hands up? I, I'm not seeing anybody right now. I don't see anyone either. Okay, so at the, mo at the moment we have a, a motion on the floor to uh, write a reso of support for this bus Second. stop. Second. Thank you. Um, so. Thank you. Let's, uh, Take a vote on this. Okay, 
when I call your name, please say whether you are in favor, oppose, abstain, or abstain for cause. B. Disman. Approve. Charles Fernandez. In favor. Matt Roberts. In favor. Gene Santoro. In favor. Larry Shire. In favor. Ann Seligman. In favor. Brian Van Nieuwen Elvin. In favor. With seven in favor and nobody opposed or abstaining, the resolution passes. Well, there we go. Good thank job. you all. Patrick, you've been victorious yet again. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay. Would you like me to stay on, Gene, tonight? Or do you uh, need to no, I don't think that's. I don't think that's needed. We have, we're we're done with you. We have some other stuff to talk about, but um, you can definitely go have dinner or whatever it was you were planning to do in your real life. You know, I much appreciate it, and to all of you individually, I appreciate your participation in community board activities, and thank you for your attention and your support this evening, and thank you to the. Uh, well, on behalf of all the riders who are your neighbors and residents and local people who utilize the service in the area. So thank you again. And thank you, Colleen. And we'll talk more on that other rider, Larry. Thank you. Okay, you guys have a great night. I'm going to jump off. Thank all you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So the next item on the agenda. I was trying to interrupt Gene, but- we Oh, so, no, you're right. We need somebody to write the rezo. I'm sorry, I was jumping ahead. Okay. Somebody needs to somebody needs to do that. Um, can we have somebody step forward? Brendan has provided an easy template. It's a very simple reza. reza. We've done them dozens of times. Uh, we get somebody to fill it in. I'll do it. Thank you, Ann. Appreciate it. Uh, Man, the, only, the only thing about this, I mean, it's very short and it's very simple, but we do need to get it into the office. I guess that would be tomorrow, Brendan. Is that right? Or yes, Wednesday morning, it, okay? Yeah, I, ideally tomorrow, but it should be pretty easy. As Gene said, I have a resolution template for bus stop applications. So um, it's only a few things that you'll need to fill in. Great. Well, um, Brendan, if you'll send that to me and if there's like an application number or anything like that for this, that, that's fine. I'll, I can get it done tomorrow. Yep, I'll send great. all the information to you right after the meeting. Okay, great. Thank you again, Ann. All right, uh, next up is the street co-naming problem, which I don't intend to get through this tonight because it's complicated, but I did want to get this to you and I did want to set up the discussion um, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit, I think, to go through this. Uh, we've had a a sort of de facto moratorium on street co-naming since uh, for about the last year because a couple of things went south on us, uh, partly because we don't really have a defined process or at least it wasn't well enough defined. So uh, looking things over and seeing that the, there are more applications starting to come in now, uh, we have to kind of decide what to do. So we have essentially two broad options. One is to actually create a process that's more defined and better vetted than the kind of sketchy stuff that we were doing. Or uh, we can pass a rezo declaring a moratorium, which is about, about half the Manhattan community boards have done that. Uh, we haven't done that yet. We discussed the moratorium and we agreed to have it, but we didn't pass an actual rezo. So those are the two stark options um, at either end of the spectrum. Assuming that uh, we want to go ahead with actually proceeding with co-namings, I should add that there were 199 of them at the end of last year across the city of New York, which is probably some kind of a record. It seems like a lot to me. But um, at any rate, if we do want to go ahead, because there are people starting to come in and ask about this stuff, then we should redefine the process. Uh, if we just want to put a halt to it for a while longer, then we should just discuss passing a moratorium. So that's the broad strokes of this. Like I said, there's a lot of weeds in here um, to get into. So I wanted to get it to you. It's a, basically what I did was draw from uh, some of the city council stuff, but also our fellow community boards in Manhattan that don't have moratoria. Um, some of the ones in Brooklyn, because they have pretty robust 
um, processes that they use to screen these things, which would be very helpful. So the question is, what do we want to do? And I'm willing to hear from everybody and anybody about that because I don't have any preconceptions. Like I said, I'm just setting up the fact that we have to do something. Okay, Anne. So I think the, um, the city council also has, uh, you know, regulations on this. Am I right? Like there's some, there, there, there's some kind of protocols at the city level. Yeah, there are, but they're, they're, um, they're, I wouldn't say they're minimal, but they defer to the community boards in a lot of ways. So it would be helpful if you actually looked at them. But, um, you know, it's, these are, we're trying to get a sense of what it is that people are doing in general, not just what's mandated from the city council, because the community boards are very much part of this. It's only advisory. But nevertheless, we're the ones who have to screen it. And the city council people, in my experience, will not be very committal um, about these things in advance. They don't want to uh, say no. They, well, they, well, th th that's part of it. Yeah. But I mean, the larger part of it is they don't want to, as they would put it, they don't want to interfere in the community board process because this yeah. is something that we're involved in. Okay, I'm just, I, I feel like that's at least the minimum where we need to start, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, yeah. But uh, it's a very minimum, it's a very minimum sort of thing. So that's why I was looking at other community boards. And I looked at about a dozen of them uh, and pulled this stuff together from them. And you can see, I sent you guys uh, a partial list of, of what those committees were, what those committees and boards were. So you can see from scanning them that some of the requirements for Aiden's Ridley, I mean, some people had like 20 years of service. Some people have 200 signatures on petitions. Um, it goes, it goes kind of up and down all over the place. So those are, that's the menu that I think if we decide that we need to set up a more robust process as opposed to declaring a moratorium, I think that's the direction we need to go in to be consistent with the other boards, at least in Manhattan and at least in the inner parts of Brooklyn that are better, closest to us. Um, that would be my suggestion anyway. Okay, B, your hand is up. Thanks, Jean. Sure. So I actually started to think about this process, um, and we can talk about it in the new business, uh, with the death of our former district manager. So I asked Jean what we, what the place is doing about co-naming. And I really appreciated receiving the summary from the other community boards because there are some very core principles. Uh, I will say there's a core principle as to length of time, whether it be 10 or 20, everyone has a time, who's doing this has a time. Um, I think there's also the involvement of the community whether you do petitions or you don't do petitions, uh, but you certainly have to be transparent where the person lived. And I think situations will come up that people des are deserved of co-naming because of what their contributions are. So I would support us developing a process. Doesn't have to take place in one meeting or two meetings, but I think you know, it makes sense for people who have really contributed and we would define what those contributions are to have the ability to recognize them through codenaming. So I would move to working on a process as opposed to a moratorium. Thank you, B. Yes, and I would, I would agree that um, this is not something we're gonna get done this month or next month. It's, it, I mean, maybe we'll get it done next month, but it's something that it's, it's not a big rush. It's something that's looking to the future, maybe a few months ahead um, in terms of having to be done by then. But um, if we're gonna go ahead, we should definitely do it. And I think those core principles are, are sound recognition of what's going on in, in the community boards that are the closest to us and the most, most likely to be like us in terms of our attitudes. Um, Brian, your hands up. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, um, I was gonna, I agree with everything Bia said and I think we should form a task force to discuss this outside of the committee and review all this extra data that we have and all this extra information in terms of like what our decision criteria could be. And then form a proposal to come back to us for a resolution that we can review ahead of a meeting and then have a vote on. 
What do people think about that? I think that's a great idea. Okay. Anyone else? Larry's got his thumb up. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well then, I mean, I think it's a great idea too. Now all we need to do is put together a task force to do this. Who's going to volunteer to be on that? Well, Brian, since it was your idea, I think you're automatically on it. Well, I would, uh, so my whole uh, thing on that is that I actually don't particularly have strong opinions about this kind of thing. So I think everybody who is really invested in this kind of thing should consider being a part of uh, doing this. But I have to admit that I'm kind of very blase about whether we approve codenaming or not. I so think maybe I'm not the, the best reason. person. I think that's all the more reason to have you on it, on the task force. Okay, but uh, then we're, our time frame is going to have to stretch out a little bit because I'm moving in 10 days. I'm staying in the district, but it's going to be quite busy for a little while. That's okay. Again, there's not, we don't have a time limit on this. It's not like we have to get this done by March. Um, what we have to do is as we do it is try to get it right because once we put this out there i mean we can modify it of course but i'd rather get it right on the first try rather than have to back up and backfill on stuff because we screwed something up so i'd rather take the time and get it right get it robust enough so that we have a process that protects us from um, making errors that are unforced errors let's say um, and also expedites um, people's desire, as B said, to memorialize people who are deserving. So um, I got no problem with it stretching over a couple of months. So if that works for you, Brian. Yeah, I mean, as I can do it for, I, I can do it from April instead of March, for example. Okay. So um, if we have a if we have a meeting sometime in March to convene the task force and then a quick follow-up to discuss particulars of the resolution. I think that would work great as an organizational thing, but I think that if you feel very strongly about it, you should be on the task force. Please do not surprise us in the next meeting that we discuss this with strenuous objections to something that like five other people worked on. Fair enough. Uh, so who else is gonna step up and join Brian? Give him a hand here. Don't all stampede to your raise hand signs. Not seeing anybody. Okay, if somebody else will write the reso, I will do the task force. I also have no strong opinions on this, but come on guys, like step up. Being on this community board is not just coming to meetings. Uh, Gene can send an email after the meeting too. We don't have all we don't have full attendance here tonight, and uh, we can convene about that uh, volunteering offline. But I mean, if it's me and Ann, that's a start. Right. Okay. Yeah, good enough. And yes, Brendan can definitely send out an email alerting people, and I'll follow up with <clears throat> with a notice about this. Um, My sorry. agreement was conditional. Excuse me. My agreement to do it was conditional. Okay. I said I would do it if somebody else will write the reso. And frankly, I'd rather write the reso. And I'll write the reso. Okay. Does that mean you're also on the task force? No. No? I'll write the bus resolution. Uh, we already oh, have Dan was doing talking that. about the co-naming resolution. We already I have was somebody not. doing that, Larry. Yes. Larry understood me correctly and oh. called my bluff. Could you explain? I don't follow. Gene, I'll I'll stay on the task force, but we can coordinate this all time. All right, yeah, because this is this is obviously not uh, not going along swimmingly. Let's say, uh, let's give everybody a chance to think about it. Let's give the the members who aren't here a chance to step up and volunteer. It's 
it'll be a couple of hours worth of work, but it's not going to be that complicated. I think that the pieces, there are a lot of pieces, but none of them is that complicated. Once you separate them out, there's a handful of them and the things that people have to decide on will be pretty straightforward. So let's do it that way, Brian. Thanks for the suggestion. I think that's a good way to go. We'll do that. We'll convene offline and get other volunteers, uh, at, least, uh, at least two, I think. We use one or two is good enough for you. For me, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I would be happy with a group of four or five, but if we have to proceed with three, that would be fine. Yeah, There's been times on budget where I convened a task force and it was a task force of one, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I think since we've got 11 members, five is too many, two or three will, will do it and we don't wanna to get too complicated uh, in, the, in the task force part of it. So let's, let's do it that way. We'll talk and get this, and get this set up and um, moving ahead. Hopefully we can, we can get this done by April. So thank you, it is complicated, but you know, again, it's a housekeeping issue. It's no fun, but we need to do it. Yes, Larry, your hand is up. Well, if, if I'm taking over the, uh, the Hampton Jitney uh, uh, resolution, uh, Brendan, would you send me the template and the application, please? Yep, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Let's move along to agenda item number three, then, which is Grand Central Terminal which uh, in the time-honored method of politicians around the country, I'm gonna kick this can down the road because uh, Phil is very involved in this. I wanted to be more involved in this and he couldn't be here tonight. So I don't wanna get too deep into the, into the weeds on this without him being here. So, uh, and again, this is something that isn't, it's not time crucial anymore. I mean, DOT is, as Colleen can tell us, uh, is pushing back timelines on all kinds of projects all over the city right now. Uh, this is not something that even if we got it done this month or next month, it was going to go into operation. It's probably not going to happen until 2023 at the, at the earliest. So let's just um, wait on that so that we can actually work our way through it. And hopefully uh, the same thing when we get it done, it'll be done as opposed to we're just sort of slogging at it, throwing pieces at the wall and then having to double back. I think that makes more sense in terms of procedure. So unless anybody has any objections, let's proceed that way. Okay, any hands, any objections, any comments, whatever. Okay, I'm not seeing any. So I guess we can move along to uh, the next thing on the agenda as I've got it is the uh, DOT report, Colleen. Hi, hi, Jean. Hi, everyone. It's Colleen Chattagong from City DOT. So um, last week, Friday, I sent an email to the board's office about um, upcoming work on the Ed Koch Queensborough Bridge. Um, that work is scheduled to begin on 2-14-22. DOT will begin its planned project to replace the upper deck of the Ed Koch Queensborough Bridge. And I sent an attachment um, of a one pager of the work to be done. I can forward that to Eugene um, when I finish here. The south outer roadway will typically remain open to 1 a.m. each night. The project will include everything from installing the new deck, painting, lighting upgrades, and the bike and pedestrian paths upon completion in 2023. And of course, there will be traffic enforcement agents there to assist at critical points. And we have a liaison for the project. She's really fantastic. Her name is Anita. And she's been keeping the community board abreast as well as the elected officials of all of the updates. Okay. That's all I know. Okay, well, I'm sure we're gonna have some questions for you about uh, other things in a minute. Meantime, uh, Larry's got a question right now. Yes, uh, this relates to the, uh, the Queensboro Bridge condition as it is right now. Um, the existing uh, shared uh, path has uh, a darkness problem, meaning that uh, many of the streetlights are not functioning. Uh, calls to 311 have not uh, resulted in getting that rectified. Uh, there are various places uh, en route, um, uh, beginning down on uh, uh, 
on 60th Street uh, before the switchback, and then uh, over on the um, uh, closer to the Queens side. Uh, they're very, very dark areas. Uh, well, the other lighting, lighting upgrades are planned for the project, uh, Larry. Just so you know. No, but if but if you're walking across the bridge tonight, uh, you're likely to get uh, slammed by. Uh, a um, illegal vehicle, and that's the other issue. Um, uh, motorized vehicles should not be in that lane, and uh, they are going at excessive speeds, and uh, people are getting their hands broken as they're getting clipped, and uh, this is uh, a very dangerous situation. What does DOT intend to do for this additional year as uh, riders uh, on illegal vehicles become more and more aggressive? Um, you know, Larry, I'm not aware of what you just mentioned to me. I would have to follow up with our Bridges Division to see if they have any reports of, of any crashes that's occurring. Um, Streets to Blog has an article uh, today or yesterday on this very subject. I uh, okay. recommend that you take a look at I, it and then follow I up with your people. Please take a look at it because I know when initially when uh, we issued, you know, the statement for the work to be done, I know Streets Blog did an article um, last week, but I don't know of anything recent. I'll definitely take a look at it and I'll discuss it with our Bridges Division. Thank you. You're welcome, Larry. Okay. Uh, Colleen, we've got a question uh, from a resident. Sure. Uh, 25th Street between 1st and 2nd Avenue. Traffic has been very problematic over the last three years spilling onto 1st Avenue. Um, Brendan has tried to help in the past, but DOT is claiming no. I don't know exactly what that means. I guess it means that they're saying there isn't a problem. Is it the horns 20 can be incessant and if an ambulance gets stuck, it's a long way through. It's an exit off this drive, yet has no turn lane. So anyway, this is like, it's for those of us working for home it's very problematic. So that's that's the question. The 25th Street uh, exit off the FDR between 1st and 2nd Avenue seems to be having a problem according to this resident. Okay, um, we'll be more than happy to look at any signal timing changes there. Can you forward me that email if it's an email chain that was sent to the office? Uh, it's, in the, it's in the Q and A right here. It's in the Q and A, okay, great. All right, I'll, we'll, I'll take a look at it. I'll get that information. Terrific, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions for Colleen before I move on to the chair's report, which you're gonna have some, Colleen, I'd appreciate it if you stick around because I'm sure this is gonna prompt some reaction. I um, will, definitely. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> anybody else have any further questions for Colleen before I do the chair's report? Guess not, okay. Uh, the first thing was up that I was going to talk about was the 59th Street Bridge. We've covered that. Um, second thing is that I hear that the 43rd Street shared street redesign is in the works uh, and was presented to the East Midtown Governing Group. And I was wondering when we would get to see that. Hi, Jean. I will follow up with our pedestrian plaza group. I know Brendan reached out to me regarding a presentation this month. I will uh, check and confirm and I'll get us on uh, next month's agenda for that. Terrific, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, the next thing is the ever popular NYU Langone bus stop and construction problem. Um, <clears throat> NYU and DOT did not get together sufficiently to discuss this in any depth. So that's one reason they are not here to this month because there was no point in having them come because they had nothing to discuss. Um, but they're hopeful that this will, meeting will take place within the next month so that we'll see them on next month's agenda, at which point we will have to grapple with um, what that is going to, what is going to ensue as a result of those changes, um, which will be, as I understand, for about three years and will involve having a staging area on First Avenue as well as moving the bus stop. It's one reason the bus stop has to move. 30th Street can't be used because it's already a staging area for a couple of other projects that are ongoing around NYU. So that's the deal with that. That's why they're not here this month. That's why they'll be here next month. And just to give you a little update on that, um, regarding the M15 bus stop relocation on First Avenue between East 30th and 34th Street, we've been working with NYU on that. And I'm told, because I checked with our bus stop management, and I'm told that a payment invoice was submitted um, 
And my colleague in DOT's bus stop management division confirmed this and spoke with the contact at NYU advising that the timeline for the work to be completed is 45 business days from the date that the payment is received. However, we have not received any payment yet. So hopefully when NYU comes before the committee next month, you know, they'll have more information to tell you about the relocation and how long that will be. Great, okay, thank you, yeah. You guys disagree about the state of the check, but that's okay. That's not my problem. That's between the two. I, know. I just wanted to let you know that's what what that's probably what held them up from coming as well. Yes, that's probably a factor. Okay. Yes, uh, Anne, your hand is up. Um, yeah, I'm just curious because, like, the idea of the staging avenue, a uh, staging area on First Avenue, is like very different from moving the bus stop. You know, a hundred feet. Um, so, you know, I, I hope they'll come prepared that I, I, you know, I go to that hospital pretty regularly and it, the buses are already lucky if he, if, if the, if they can get in there because there are so many, um, both private cars, but especially, you know, you know, for higher vehicles, trying to use that space, people are coming there who can't walk very far. So, um, yeah, like it's, I, I, you know, moving this bus stop 100 feet is not a big deal. <clears throat> Having First Avenue as a staging area is a much bigger deal. Okay, yeah, no, agreed. Uh, and in fact, I've had three meetings with NYU in advance of this already, and I've made those points, uh, as well as other ones, trying to um, get them to focus on that. They're aware of it. What exactly is going to happen as a result of that, I'm not sure, but uh, they did point out that the, where the bus stop is being moved to is actually in some ways more accessible uh, for the commuters who are getting off it where, rather than where it is at the foot of the driveway. Yeah, exactly. So, no, I'm, no disagreement there. I'm talking about like the staging area yeah. could be a lot worse. Well, yeah, it's uh, we have again. We haven't seen any of that because that stuff hasn't been worked out, at least as far as I'm aware. I have seen nothing. Uh, we've been talking in preliminary terms until until DOT and NYU sit down and work out their stuff. <clears throat> so hopefully, yes, I agree with you. Hopefully we will see um, the care and discretion that they uh, they use to, uh, to do this with. But we'll see that when we see it. Uh, Larry, your hands up. I agree with Anne wholeheartedly about uh, uh, hopefully permanently relocating this bus stop. Ever since the bus stop was put in its current position, uh, the problems that she's described have existed, and no amount of uh, NYPD enforcement has been able to uh, make uh, the slightest bit of difference. So uh, I think we want to keep this in mind when we have that meeting. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, it doesn't look like it. So last thing on my report is the um, CB4 thing I sent you guys uh, about pedestrians and outdoor dining and CB4's uh, letter about it because they're gonna, they're gonna that was their testimony, will be their testimony to the city council tomorrow. That's one reason I only got this on Sunday from Christine Berthay at CB4. Uh, so I wanted to get it out to you guys in case anybody felt strongly enough about this to um, either testify as individuals or just watch the hearing or whatever. Uh, but I wanted to also put the question to the committee about whether or not there are enough people who feel strongly about it one way or another to support it uh, as, a, as a group or whether we should just let it go and let individuals take the, uh, take the lead on this. I'm open. So what are, the, what are your thoughts, if any? Don't all talk at once. I'm assuming that means nobody feels very strongly about it, uh, since nobody's jumping up and down. So in that case, um, we'll just leave it as it is. Uh, Anybody who wants to testify as an individual, remember that when you, you're doing this, um, you can't represent yourself as representing CB6 because we don't have a position on it formally. Um, however, you're perfectly welcome to testify as individuals with knowledge 
and information and an interest in this to um, let the city council and the DCP know what, what it is that you're, uh, you're thinking about it. So we'll do it, we'll do it that way. And that gets something else off the agenda good because we're gonna, we're gonna have some, uh, we're gonna have some heavy hitting things coming up, but it's okay because I, again, I'd rather take our time on some of these things and do them right. We've got all spring uh, rather than rush through them and try to get stuff done and, and bobble some balls in place. So let's do that. And um, okay, I think that's all I've got. So I'm, uh, is there any older new business that somebody hasn't raised? Brian. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, we don't actually require a second anymore, but thank you, Anne, that's fine, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> so let us, let us do that at 7.49. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys all showing up and, uh, and doing this. And, you know, again, tonight, tonight was a relatively easy meeting um, because I think it's just, I think it's just better that way. We're going to have, we're going to have some trenches to dig uh, over the next two or three months, but hopefully with the task force operating um, on the co-naming and um, some of the other things we've got in play, we've already made progress on those things. So I think that we're in, we're in pretty good shape going forward to work through June and get all this stuff done, which is basically the, the outer target that we've got. So I think we're good. Again, thank you very much for coming. Um, I would say don't get wet on your way home, but hopefully that's not a problem for anyone. And uh, off you go. So thank you again. Thanks for the hard work and uh, see you all in a month.